Welcome to How Art and Design Can Enrich Voting. My name is Diva Patel and I am a student at Saginaw Valley State University. And I vote because I know that I have frustrations about how things are going on in the world. And I know that the best place that I can air out my frustrations is at the ballot box. So this session will focus on the importance excuse me, of considering art and design in voter engagement activities. I am happy to introduce our three presenters, Hannah Smotrich and Stephanie Roden, professors at the Stamp School of Art and Design at the University of Michigan and Ann Arbor City Clerk, Jackie Boudry. So if it's not evident, Stephanie's the, the rectangle up there on the, on the screen. Um, uh, so sound okay if we're kind of both here? Yeah, so thank you um, for joining us. Um, uh, as uh, so Stephanie is gonna be able to control the slides. Um, I'm Hannah Smotrich and I'm um, a visual communication designer and an exhibit designer. Um, uh, hi everyone, I hope the sound is working. Um, I'm, um, I'm actually um, underneath the project that we're gonna talk about today. So um, I also teach with Hannah at the Stamp School at U of M. Hi, and I'm Jackie Boudry. I'm the Ann Arbor City Clerk. I've been the City Clerk in Ann Arbor since 2005. Um, and I'm also uh, the Vice President of the Michigan Association of Municipal Clerks. So um, been around for quite a while in the clerk community. And also um, we'll talk later, but um, with partnership with the University of Michigan and the Stamp School for a number of years as well. And, um, Jackie's here because as you'll see, she is a critical, a critical piece of everything we do. So Stephanie and I, um, as, as was mentioned, we're faculty at the Stamp School of Art and Design. We've been doing this work for about four years. And over that time, we've explored a range of different ways that art and design can kind of add value um, in this space. Um, and the thing that we want to talk about today um, is a, a project that you can see here on the left from 2020, the, the clerk's office that we did at the art museum on campus. Um, so we're really excited, uh, Stephanie, I don't know if you can advance, um, to share the project in its, in its current iteration. Um, and it's been an unbelievably close and uh, rewarding collaboration, um, not only between um, the Stamp School and the museum, but very critically uh, with, with Jackie. And um, we recognize, I don't know what campuses folks are here from, but um, is this something at this scale may not be possible on all campuses, but um, we are true believers that actually art and design really has a lot to offer students in voting. Uh, so we have some thoughts about kind of how there are some takeaways um, from this project. So uh, before we start, I think it's really important just to say, um, and I see some Munich vote shirts right up here, that uh, we are very lucky to be doing um, the work that we do um, <laughs> excellent. Um, Stephanie, see that advance. We're really lucky to do the work that we're doing in conversation um, with an amazing uh, series of partners on campus. Um, I'm, Are you able to advance? Um, I'm having a hard time doing it uh, for some reason. Um, uh, I'm just gonna. Um, anyway, so there are there's an amazing um, series of people who are on the UMich campus who are doing this work. Many of whom have been a part of um, this coalition of uh, of people for many many years. Um, before, while Stephanie looks for the image, I'll tell you there's uh, something called the U of M Democracy and Debate Initiative, which is um, not only a, a wonderful partner but a key supporter of the work we're doing. Uh, turn up, turn out, the UMA, the museum, and of course the Ginsburg Center, um, which is our student engagement piece and um, our key collaborator, <laughs> um, which is our relationship with the city and um, city clerk Jackie Boudry in particular, who uh, very graciously agreed to join us here today. Definitely. All right, let, yes, can you hear me? A little bit. A little bit. Okay, um, I'll try and speak up. So, um, a uh, couple things to mention um, about uh, the work that Hannah and I do. Our project is called the Creative Campus Voting Project. And of course, it's uh, nonpartisan. Um, we think a lot about behavioral science in the sense of really making all our uh, art and design decisions around um, how can we help students um, through what might be some of the tripping points on the way from registration to voting, but also um, uh, what's actually really helpful for them. 
And uh, a really big thing that we're always thinking about, of course, as you all know, is that college voters are uh, new voters and that it can be, um, that it can be a confusing um, uh, process. So I think that you'll see with all of the work that we're doing, uh, kind of uh, clarity and uh, reducing uh, anxiety um, and a sense of welcome is, is really key to what we're thinking about. So here's just a list of adjectives that we think about a lot with everything that we design. Again, making things that are welcoming, clear, calm, reassuring, trustworthy, and um, because we're artists and designers, uh, delightful is, is really important for us. These are kind of our North Stars. So um, many creative projects start with a need. And uh, this one started with a really huge need. And I'm gonna pass things over to Jackie to describe the situation um, at the clerk's office on uh, election day, the primary March, 2020. Thank you, Stephanie. So if um, you remember March of 2020 was really our, it was the presidential primary right before the pandemic really hit Michigan. And it was our first go at implementing the provisions of Proposition 18.3, which was the promote the vote from the 2018 election. And from a municipal clerk side, you know, we knew that we went from a 30 day close of registration to um, 15 days for mail-in and then in person at our office um, up through eight o'clock on election day. So we really focused on at that time, how do we make our process efficient and how do we get as many people through the clerk's office as possible? Um, what we weren't really thinking about is maybe moving that process to campus to make it um, easier and to have more access for students. So what we discovered in 2020 is in March of 2020 is that we did have lines um, because the, our message that we were available and that there were these new um, voter rights that students were included in really didn't reach the campus community until maybe a week or so before the election where we started seeing more and more students getting um, to City Hall, which is just a few blocks from campus, but it's still for a freshman for their first time in Ann Arbor, that's a different world than what they're used to um, walking around central campus. So one of the lessons for us was, okay, we, we tried to make our, the clerk's office process, the registration, issuing a ballot as fast and as quick as we could so we could maximize um, our turnout and keep those lines shorter. But really what came out of that whole experience was that Every, without being a presence on campus, everyone came in the last day or two and it was chaotic and busy. And so um, we basically moved from there to conversations about what can we do to improve this going into the general presidential election in November of 2020. All right. So um, as Jackie mentioned, um, March was really chaotic and there were conversations that, um, um, uh, uh, that had uh, were starting to uh, coalesce around bringing uh, a clerk's office to campus. And we learned that the gallery, uh, the glass gallery uh, that faces State Street in the center of the campus uh, wouldn't have the normally programmed exhibition because of the pandemic. Um, so we proposed this as a space. And what we loved about it, particularly with our interest in making voting visible, was that it was right in the center of campus, right in the center of students' lives and completely, um, completely uh, visible. So thanks to um, uh, Jackie Boudry's vision and the museum's vision, they took a leap of faith and um, we uh, designed and um, uh, produce the elements for this office uh, very quickly in a matter of weeks. And here are just a couple of images. Uh, we loved that students could sit down with a clerk and get their questions answered. We really thought about what information was placed where and strategically and um, in the clearest way possible. And I will just give credit to my colleague, 
Hannah for uh, her visual communications props. And the idea is really to guide students incrementally through each step. And crucially, we had peer mentors in the space to help students one-on-one. -on -one. Here are a few of our favorite quotes from students. Uh, felt like a place where students were invited to be. It felt really calm and comfortable asking questions if I needed clarification. And uh, we had a lot of success. We registered. Um, uh, over 5,000 voters and collected over 8,000 ballots. I would say we, I would say that the clerk's office uh, did all this good work over the course of six weeks. All right, I'll pass things over to Hannah to bring us into 2022. Yeah, so we were um, we were really pleased that students were using the office and that it seemed to be creating um, the experience that we hoped. Uh, but we're designers and creative thinkers, so we immediately also were seeing all the things we wanted to change and iterate and kind of think about. Okay, that, that you know these things worked well. What didn't work as well? What can we how can we move it forward? Um, so uh, what you see on the map is the floor plan of the art museum where we are. Um, and we've expanded the project. We're now working um, in four different spaces in the museum, which um, as Stephanie said, she's uh, in the offices underneath all of the spaces that we're about to show you uh, because the office opened on Tuesday um, and it is, it is up and running and in motion. We're also um, actually gonna have a second office. Um, I just need to pause and say again, because of the sort of generous um, and expansive thinking of our city clerk. Uh, and that will be up on North Campus, which is quite a bit um, of a geographical distance, at least it appears to be for students, um, from, from where the museum is situated um, on Central. Um, and very importantly, we've also, uh, in addition to the sort of expansion um, on the ground, um, we've recruited and trained um, a cohort of what we're calling uh, UMish Votes Fellows. Um, kind of strategically trying to draw students from around campus um, who will be there to work as uh, peer mentors in the space. Um, you know, I don't need to tell the people in this room that the key piece of this is that face-to-face -face, um, interpersonal interaction. Um, so in the museum space itself, um, a UMish fellow is gonna probably be the first person you see. Um, this is what we're calling um, our welcome area. Um, I don't know if anyone in here knows UMA, but this is the area formerly known as the coat rack. <laughs> um, this was a teeny little corner. Uh, and um, again, I do uh, a, sh a shout out to the museum leadership that was totally on board with this concept. Um, and it was like, sure, we can move the coat rack. Sure, we can temporarily take down the board that was on the wall, right? So they've also just been an amazing um, partner in this work. Uh, but basically, a student who's either walking in looking for the office or maybe just headed to the cafe or perhaps to a class um, has this, you know, big visual reminder like, oh, yeah, voting, I meant to do that, right? Um, and a UMish fellow can help them either direct them right to Jackie's staff if they're interested um, in using their vote in Ann Arbor or help them, you can see, um, some of the visual resources there to help them uh, get the information that they need to vote in their, in their home districts. Um, so the clerks are uh, situated in the same gallery that they were in before, uh, same, same branding, different wall color. <laughs> um, and um, on the wall, on the other side of, of that same gallery, um, we've used that wall to just sort of remind folks about why the midterms matter. Um, and uh, one of the, again, the amazing things about this space is, this space is that both of those walls are um, highly visible for students who are just walking by the museum, um, which is on a pretty, a pretty um, well-trafficked uh, path through, through Central Campus. Um, if students are interested in, so they'll go in, they'll see the clerk, they can register on the spot, they can, they're asked if they'd like their absentee ballot on the spot. Um, or if they prefer to vote in person on election day. If they choose the absentee ballot, there's a space where they're uh, welcome to, to vote it on site as well. Um, and I think, if I can say, please, I think you can see what Hannah was talking about. You go back, Stephanie. So two of the four walls in that gallery are glass. So you're walking across campus or down State Street and you see the register, you know, vote early. Um, so request your ballot. So the, what we noticed in 2020 is that people would walk by and, and, and see us in this sort of fishbowl room and 
oh, I'm going to come in and, you know, can I register here? And so I think the, the space really, like what I was talking about earlier was getting people to city hall. And then we had to shift and say, we need to, we need to get to the people we're trying to reach. So I think that being on campus and in this particular space was a real benefit for mutually beneficial. Um, and you can see we're using these walls pretty intentionally to do um, what we often call kind of sneakily educational, <laughs> right? So it's sort of just trying, um, just trying to, to put the reminders and the tips exactly where they need to be in the process and sort of, you know, thinking, thinking carefully in that, in that way. And I'll pass that back to Stephanie. Yeah, so this is going back to uh, 2020. And what we noticed by the Dropbox was that uh, people love to take a selfie there. It was a moment of, you know, the ballot is completed. They've signed the back of their envelope and uh, they wanted to mark the moment. So we really thought about uh, how we could make the most of that, this go round and enter um, uh, the button mural on the right. And overall, what we're kind of, calling a kind of celebration area. So this button mural is an eight feet by eight feet. Um, uh, it's felt background with about 2000 buttons on it. Uh, we wanted to make something that was very visual and vibrant and uh, potentially Instagrammable. You'll see to the left there on the pedestal is a place where you can take one of those buttons if you want. And if you want to make a button of your own, you can do that um, at the um, button cart. There's a Umish Votes fellow there. You'll see where the Dropbox is and the signage. And we found that that button cart, that's just that simple act of making something together has been quite powerful and fun. So here's another Umish Votes fellow that's uh, got a, a, a group of people uh, in between classes making buttons. So you might be wondering, um, what can you do on your campus, um, particularly if you're not an artist or designer? So we have some, some kind of um, some thoughts here, and uh, this is something that we'll continue to think about, um, how some of the principles that we're working with can be useful elsewhere. But here are just a couple of thoughts that we have. Um, the first thing is just to consider um, the ways in which you can make efforts uh, visible and um, appealing. So uh, finding um, visible appealing locations for tabling and how can you give them a clear and vibrant presence? Um, obviously, I'm sure you all know, uh, t-shirts, buttons, laptop stickers um, are all really great ways to make uh, voting visible and celebrate participation. And to make those things, uh, it, it might be helpful to look for partners. So if you know of any design professors, art professors, or art and design students, they could be really um, a great resource. Um, and a lot of um, faculty and students are looking for ways to tap into their skill sets uh, to participate. Another thought is uh, to engage with the local arts community on campus to see if you can find a central a vis visual visible presence. Uh, if not for a satellite office, which obviously takes a lot of planning and um, collaboration and interest. Um, and uh, we're very fortunate as Hannah has mentioned to work with, with Jackie. Um, but, um, working with the local arts community to even to find uh, spots for uh, tabling to make voting visible. One of the things that we um, think about a lot is how to make each of these situations not only visually appealing, but also calm and welcoming, and importantly, not overwhelming with too much information. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass this over to Hannah to say a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just say that, um, again, everyone in this room knows, <laughs> it's really hard to make things concise in this realm, 
because inevitably there's six other situations where actually the facts are slightly different, <laughs> right? Um, and doing this work, we all know how critical it is um, to be absolutely accurate um, and nonpartisan and truthful. And you know, there's so many things, there are so many complicating factors to the kinds of work that you're doing in this space. Um, and that's often uh, in, in a very um, clear tension with the sort of basic principles of design, right? Which is to sort of like clear away um, the noise so that you can really um, successfully transmit the signal, right? And that, that push and pull between, you know, what is, what's really the signal versus the noise. Um, one of the things that we have, found, and I'll start by saying that everything we've done We've redone about 10 times, right? And I'll also, um, I'll confess, uh, you know, we have a sign that is currently up in the installation that after we put up, we thought, you know what? There's these seven other kinds of situations in which possibly unintentionally, we may be misleading somebody. And so we're actually in the process of revising it, right? So um, don't despair. <laughs> it's, it's a hard process and it requires iteration, uh, but it's really worthwhile to do. Um, and I am going to get to back to the topic, but I'm going to loop back to this partner idea, right? So there are really motivated, skilled, creative people on most campuses. They often do not have the substantive knowledge that folks who are coming at this um, in, from poli sci or policy or you know some of the places where campus engagement typically lives. And so the ability to kind of work together with partners is critical. So we could not do anything we do without a really close collaboration um, with Turn Up, Turn Out and Edie Goldenberg and Logan Woods. And, you know, they, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we take our best shot based on everything they've taught us so far. And then we hand it over to them to vet and to Jackie to vet. And it, it really is um, an iterative process. Um, but one key, but, but there, it, there, it is really important as the communications person in this, in this piece, my role is usually to say yes, but if we say everything, we end up saying nothing because you just, people are already overwhelmed, students are already anxious, they desperately wanna do the right thing, they wanna get an A on the test, right? Um, and if you just say like, here's everything you need to know, um, you know, contrary to the myth that they're apathetic, I think they're actually really responsible and responsive and they don't want to do it wrong, right? And so it's off-putting. So chunking information and really kind of spending the time, a lot of design is actually writing and content generation and thinking about what does this person need in this moment, right? And how can we give them a resource if they need something else or if they're a different person than we think? Right, you know, so if you're interested in voting in Arbor, here do this. If you wanna vote elsewhere, go that way, right? So kind of trying to separate out those strands is, is often um, the thing that makes it possible not to overwhelm. Okay, Stephanie is gently nudging me along. So for oh. instance, <laughs> um, this is a little handout that we've done, um, know your ballot, just trying to be really, um, Really basic here, what we're saying is it's impossible to know everything about everything on the ballot, but a little research can help you, right? So, you know, how do I research? Three easy steps, right? There's multiple ways to do this, but let's just, let's bring it down to the three things you can do in this moment. Um, you wanna keep moving me along, Stephanie? Okay. Oh, okay, sorry. So filling out the registration form, right? So one of the real advantages we have at the satellite office is that we are, we are, talking to and working with a very specific segment of our population. These are students, at least once they're getting to this form, who have chosen to vote in Ann Arbor at that moment. So you'll see in 2020, so the state of Michigan, they're talking to everybody anywhere who wanna take care of anything that they possibly need to, right? So they're, they have to kind of provide all of those options. In 2020, in the satellite office, we said, we don't have to, talk to everybody. Let's talk to our students who are walking in and doing this. So we created, actually one of my students created this green slip that we put and we sort of covered up the Michigan instructions because those talked about many situations that were not relevant for our students in that moment. Um, and now in 2022, uh, with the blessing um, of the Secretary of State's office and of course the, the direct guidance of Jackie, we actually have just printed a single form 
Um, and uh, so that's what we're now using in our offices. So again, it's just clearing away um, really important information for other contexts, right? So um, stuff we can kind of move, move away from. And, and that, Stephanie, if you can back that up just a second. Um, and that, like what I was talking about earlier about our initial thought was we have to make this efficient because we, we don't actually know how many people are gonna come on election day, how many people are gonna come in the week before. And the simplifying this form, everyone standing in front of us is an in-person registration. So all that mail-in stuff was just like taken away. And so this might not be relevant for you, but what we've explained to other clerks is you know, making things easier for the person you're working with. In this case, everyone coming to the satellite office is registering in person. So what do we need from them to, to make that transa transaction as smooth and easy as possible? And that's where we as the um, election officials have benefited from the art and design is exactly what we were looking for was what makes this a good process for us and for the voter. Jack, you want to talk about this piece? Okay. So I think you saw this photo earlier. And um, one of the benefits of this from both the voters' perspective and from the clerk's office perspective is the simplicity of the message. Um, we noticed that at the UMA office on campus, we have a lot of first time voters, um, a lot of young people inexperienced with the process. And yet we didn't have the situation that we often see in elections is that we get ballot envelopes back unsigned. And that was because of the banner behind the Dropbox. Here's just two simple things for you to check before you drop this in the Dropbox. And this was so successful that we asked Hana to make one for City Hall because it's the same message, whether you're 18 or 80 or, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter who the voter is in this case. And so this was one of the things that we've shared with other clerks and it's not expensive. Even if you don't want the vinyl banner, I mean, a simple poster would do the same trick, but that it's also um, number two is, are you sure that the envelope you're turning in is for the Ann Arbor city clerk? So trying to you know, eliminate getting what should be put in a postal box for an out of state um, ballot or something. Of course, we always, if we get them, we forward them on, but ideally the box is for Ann Arbor ballots. But that was just one of the, um, when you're trying to make these collaborations with your clerk, one of the things that we found is um, the design elements benefit not just the voter, but us as well. Um, so the, the next one is, this is just really was amazing to us. I mean, we, I've been doing this 20 years. This is the Michigan voter registration form. It is what it is. There's, there's or excuse me, application for absentee ballot. And again, people aren't, um, mailing this in they're not asking us to mail them a ballot in the case of the satellite office they're standing in front of me and i want to register to vote and then yes i'd like to get my no reason absentee ballot so all of this busyness about when will you be out of town where should we mail it it didn't apply to anyone in the satellite office everyone in the satellite office was asking us to hand them a ballot so they could vote right there or take it to their dorm with them, but it was an in-person transaction. And we simplified from the left to the right. And again, that when you have 50 or 100 people in line, the, the efficiency for the clerk's office, all we're asking, we print, we register you to vote and we print a label with your name and address. We stick it on the label slot and we say, please sign here and we'll get you your ballot. There's nothing else for the voter to fill out, just sign the form. And that was, like I said, I've shared that with other clerks. There are ways that you can make this um, in-person request a lot simpler than, it's not a knock on the Michigan form. It's like Hannah said, this is trying to meet everybody's needs and the in-person form is just face-to-face. -face. So that, that was a real win for me as a clerk um, to have this form, which we've implemented at the front counter at City Hall as well. Yeah, and I'll just, just to kind of end this little sequence here to say that um, these were our examples, right? But the principle is, is the same, right? So thinking about what are you doing on your campus in your context and really just trying to kind of 
think strategically and analytically about the information that's needed in the particular situations where you are and taking the time to separate that out and, and lift that up. Hi, Stephanie, go for it. Oh. <laughs> so, so if, Stephanie, do you want me to go ahead? Yes, we'd love it. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so if you're, so if you're, we're echoing. Okay. Okay. So if you're trying to approach your city clerk, because as Hannah said, a lot of these um, tips that we're offering to you require a partnership um, with your clerk's office, particularly if you want a satellite office. Um, some of the things, like Hannah said, you can incorporate in tabling or other. Um, other opportunities for students that don't necessarily involve a partnership. But if you want a partnership with the city clerk, um, my advice would be to start early and you know, you're know you gonna get a different reaction in January of 2023 to say, can we start talking about what 24 looks like versus October of 2022? And the clerk is you know busy and may not take that you know, request as well. So I would just say, if you're looking forward to presidential election, the earlier, the better to say, what do we need to do to um, get a satellite office on campus? And, and that this is a benefit, not just for students, but for the clerk. What we saw in March of 2020, it's like, that's not acceptable in our community. And so one of the things that you can suggest is this is, I'm trying to help you reach first time voters that are likely going to be a same day registration transaction, but maybe we could, you know, with our marketing and communications and a satellite office, maybe we could reach that student two weeks before election day. And that's a better experience for you as a clerk and for the voter. Um, so that's what we've always looked at our partnership with the University of Michigan is is mutually beneficial for everyone involved and um, we need to be able to reach the vast number of people that are um, not registered because they just moved to Ann Arbor and how do we reach them sooner than later. So that's um, what, when you're reaching out to a clerk is, you know, there's something in this for you, not just us. And, and that's um, no clerk wants, you know, a three hour line on election day because all the students just decided or just realized they had this opportunity to register and vote. So that, that would be my advice if you're struggling um, to reach your clerk is this, is, this could be a, you know, beneficial for both of us. Um, improved efficiency, you know, reduced lines and um, access to, to the office outside of City Hall. Stephanie? I, um, I think, I think we're at a pause where we can um, take questions or just open up for conversation. So I was so, I was so, I think folks can probably hear you better than they can hear me. So go for it. It was extremely intentional. Um, so uh, for sure, we were um, looking to stay away from uh, blue or red. And obviously, that's always the, you know, it's sort of the, the happy, you know, we are nonpartisan. Um, and uh, the green was sort of a happy accident in that it was also sort of the, the city color yeah. as well. I know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, well, the voting box is redid as, as part of oh, the so system. So yeah. So I, I will say that um, we did make a actually very um, intentional decision to separate out. So in, in art and design or in marketing, right? You sort of look at what's out there yes. and how do we distinguish ourselves, right? And everything out there, at least in our town, is beige and blue. 
um, and, um, and you know, I just think, and, and many things out in the voting space are red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, part of um, part of what art and design teams do here is add that sort of unexpected delight and that unexpected shift. And so it was a very intentional decision to not sort of follow that norm. Yeah. Um, have like graphic designers working on it since it is like a lot of like typography or like. Yeah, so I, that's what I am. I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a designer, okay. and um, and we have other designers working with us. Yeah. And yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I saw so this this hand in back of you, and then that back. Yes. Projection is a great option, um, particularly if you're doing a pop-up tabling event in, you know, for a day. Um, so the images that we're showing you are part of the installation that went up about four days ago at our University of Michigan Museum of Art. So that's actually vinyl applied to a specially painted wall. Um, the second office is going to be a much more DIY affair. <laughs> um, so so um, the Vote 2022 installation is being done at museum quality exhibition level. Um, up in the Duderstadt, uh, it will also, um, I hope, uh, be aesthetically uh, refined and beautiful, but it will probably um, look more like other campuses might look if you're you know, in a student center or sort of creating some sort of a, a pop-up. So they're not permanent, but they'll be up there for the, the run of show, as, as they say at the museum, which will be um, through election day. Yeah, so we took it all down at the end of 2020 because it um, is a, a, a gallery for other art exhibits. And yeah. in fact, we didn't mention it, but the the, the whole reason the museum was available to us was because of the pandemic. So scheduled exhibits were canceled. And when we reached out to our partners at the university looking for space, that's sort of how we got introduced. And they said, well, this is a little different than what you're looking for, but you know, what would you think of having an exhibit at the art museum that's also a functional office? <laughs> and so it's just, it's kind of a, I think uh, it really, uh, neat um, story about how we even came to be in the art museum. And then we since scheduled ourselves for, you know, out for 22 and 24. But I, I do think, I mean, I don't know had we approached the art museum and said, hey, we've got this great idea. Instead of an art installation, can we create a civic experience in your gallery? I think they might've been interested, but it, it would have been a heavy lift, I think, to make that decision. And I, I think the opportunity to just see what happens um, was, really critical in them understanding the, the power of being able to be a part of, of this. And it, and it meshes beautifully with their mission as a museum. Um, but I, I do think it's, uh, it's pretty out of the ordinary for them as, as mm -hmm. well. So it's interesting. Um, so how does it change the trajectory? Why is, now that we don't have to like indicate why George Floyd is on then, why is it still on next week? Why is that still black? Oh, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good question, and maybe I wasn't clear. Imagine, um, and particularly in Ann Arbor, it's common is that somebody's out of town, so it's not that they're required to tell us. But if they ask for a ballot in August and said, "I also would like one in November," they're indicating in August I'll be, you know, maybe at my cottage in northern Michigan, but. Um, by the time it rolls around for the general election, can you send it to Florida? Something like that. It's not that it's a requirement, but that form is also serving people that truly are out of town or want something mailed. And, or maybe they're telling us, you know, I live at 123 Main Street, but please send it to my PO box, which is where I get mail. I so it's not a like, you must tell us why you need the ballot. It's well, more, used to have to be there, right. Though. So the, the check boxes of I'm over 60 or I'm out of town are gone, but we still have to know if that form comes to us through email or in the mail, how do you want us to get you the ballot? And in at the UMA office, that piece is no longer applicable because you're standing in front of me. So that was why the 
the Michigan form isn't wrong. It just, like Hannah was saying, is trying to reach a lot of different people who have different needs. Good question. So all of the operational expenses of the clerk's office are funded by the city. Um, so we're not, you know, it's 100% operational expenses are coming from the clerk. Um, the creative elements of the project, um, Stephanie and I uh, have spent a fair amount of money, uh, money, spent a fair amount of time looking for money, um, applying for grants and um, and trying to find people to support this work. Um, I will say that this time around, uh, University of Michigan and Democracy and Debate Initiative was a fabulous supporter um, and uh, has you know, really saw the benefits of campus and was on board. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you for listening to us. <laughs> All right, so thank you so oh, much to our presenters.